Hey you guys, welcome back to my channel. In today's video, we are talking about makeup mistakes that you may be making. These are all things that I myself have done before, but as I have gotten a little bit more practiced, a little bit more experienced with doing my makeup, I have found some really good solutions that I'll be sharing with you guys. Should be a lot of fun and hopefully it will be helpful. Before we get into it, I wanna welcome those of you that are new to my channel. I hope that you enjoy this one. If you do, give it a thumbs up, please, and be sure to subscribe before you leave. And with that said, let's get into some makeup mistakes. Mistake number one has to do with eyeliner and it is drawing your eyeliner above your lash line. Now, I know this might sound like where else would you draw your eyeliner? Of course you're gonna draw above your actual lash line. So let me explain exactly what I mean. When drawing eyeliner on, and this is true whether you're using a liquid liner, a pencil liner, or a gel liner, most of us are just concerned about getting the line right. So we will place our eyeliner just kind of on top of our lash line, but that is not where you should stop. If you're just drawing your eyeliner on top of where your actual lashes are growing out of your eyelid, you're going to miss those very tiny but very important areas of skin in between each of your individual lashes. So let's take, for example, this liner that I use today, the Maybelline Gel Black Eyeliner and this little tiny brush right here. So initially, I drew my actual eyeliner on, I got the shape all good to go, and then I go back in with a tiny bit more product on my brush, and I really want to take a couple of seconds to really press that product Product on the brush down in between each of those individual lashes. If you're using a pen, you can do the same thing with the tip of your eyeliner pen and very lightly just dot this in between those individual lashes. You could also come at it from below and kind of lift up on your eyelid and get your pen or your brush right in between those individual lashes or if you're using a pencil you can also do it with a pencil but it is so so important because once you have your mascara and your liner completed your eye look completely finished you want to make sure that that area by your eyelashes is nice and dark and there is no skin showing at all in addition to getting the shape of your eyeliner just right make sure that you don't forget to apply liner in between your actual lashes mistake number two has to do with mascara and it is only coating the ends of your eyelashes with your mascara wand i know that a pokey mascara wand to a very sensitive eyeball can be a little bit intimidating but I am telling you guys it is so important to really get your brush right up to the roots of your lashes I know it can seem a little hazardous a little bit dangerous But trust me with a little bit of patience a little bit of practice You can coat the roots of your eyelashes without jabbing yourself in the eyeball and similarly to how important it is to get your liner in between Your individual lashes It's also important to get your mascara on the roots and the base of your lashes as well Which as an added bonus will also help to fill in those little gaps that may have been left behind from trying to align in between your lashes Believe it or not, but when you only apply your mascara to to the tips of your lashes, it actually makes your mascara look a little bit more unnatural. Not that mascara ever looks completely natural, but when you can actually see areas of your eyelashes that are natural, that don't have any product on them, it makes it all that more obvious that you are wearing something artificial. And seeing as how the roots of our lashes are thicker than the tips of our lashes, we wanna make sure that we have that thick, rich blackness coming out at the very, very base. And the trick to doing this is just practice. You wanna practice getting the mascara brush right up at the roots of your lashes, really wiggle it in there, get that product on the roots and then pull it from there out to the ends of your lashes. And the more you practice with this, the better you'll get at it. I've gotten much better at going really close with my mascara brush without irritating my eyes. But for those of you that do have very, very sensitive eyes, maybe the base of your lashes is very sensitive and you find that when you can fill your mascara brush there, it makes your eyes water. I have a particular mascara recommendation for you and it's this one right here. This is the Bare Minerals Lash Topia Mascara. I have tried dozens of mascaras over the years, many of which I love, but I have never felt a wand that felt so invisible as this one right here. It is by far the softest mascara wand I have ever, ever used. In fact, I almost find this somewhat difficult to use because I'm used to feeling where my mascara brush touches the roots of my lashes. This one I cannot feel at all, but it does a great job and it's a really great mascara, but it is by far much softer than any other mascara brush that I have ever tried. So hopefully those tips will help you guys correct that common mistake that we can often make with our mascara. The next makeup mistake that you may be making is mismatching your foundation. Now, how many of us have had this problem before? My guess if you have ever worn makeup, you have had this problem before. It is a problem that I continue to have a hard time with because it is virtually impossible to pick a perfect shade of foundation, especially if you like to try out different foundations. But the more I play around with different foundations, the more I have learned that even more important than finding a perfect foundation formula is finding a good color match. It does not matter how much I love a foundation formula. If the shade is much too light or much too deep for me, I am not going to like 
like how it looks on me. But I have a very simple solution for you guys and it has to do with mixing foundations. Now I know mixing foundations is not the most revolutionary idea. I'm sure that many of us mix our foundations, but I have a very specific tip or specific way that I recommend that you mix your foundations. And it has to do with having two foundations on hand, one that is much too light for you and one that is much too dark for you. Let me just give you guys a quick example. So I have right here this foundation. I actually had this situation happen to me in a recent video when I was trying out this ColourPop Pretty Fresh foundation. I picked mine up in the shade Light 50W and it was a bit too light for me. Here it is right here on the back of my hand. Now I do have a foundation shade right here that's just about right for me. This is from Maybelline. This is their Dewy and Smooth foundation in the shade 118 Light Beige. Let me just show you what the shade looks like. Here it is right here. So you can see this one is just a little bit darker. Now I could mix these about 50-50 and get a good shade match for me. But if I was to do that, mix these equal parts, that means that the formula of this foundation that say I maybe prefer is now going to be compromised by too much of this product right here. Now the solution to that is adding a little bit less of a mix in in a darker shade. So one that I often like to use is this one right here. This is the Flower Beauty Light Illusion and this one is in the shade Tawny M4. Now as you will see, this one is about three or four shades too deep for me. So when I use this foundation as a mix in to a foundation I need to be a little bit darker, I don't need to use nearly as much product. I am wearing this on my face today. I mixed about 20% of the Flower Beauty Light Illusion foundation to about 80% of the ColourPop Pretty Fresh foundation. Not only did it give me a perfect shade match, but because I use less of the mix-in product, the integrity of the formula of the Pretty Fresh foundation is much more intact. So for that reason, I recommend having on hand a foundation that is several shades too dark for you and several shades too light for you. For those times when you don't get the shade match just right, you won't need to mix in quite as much product to the foundation that you're trying to get to match you. Now I know that foundations can be expensive. Even drugstore foundations can be upwards of $10 these days. And many of us may not be able to afford to have three or four bottles of $15 to $20 foundations on hand. For that reason, I highly recommend these two foundations right here. This is the Maybelline Fit Me line. I know it has been around for a long time. They have two formulas, the Dewy and Smooth and the Matte and Poreless. I actually like both of these formulas, but I love these as mix-ins because they're very, very affordable and Maybelline has a very good shade range in these lines. So regardless of what your skin tone is, it should be easy to find a shade that's a couple shades deeper and a couple shades lighter in the correct skin tone for you. And I believe if you can find these at Target or Walmart, you can find them for around $5, which makes it a little bit easier to have them on hand as mix-ins. So hopefully that tip will help you guys next time you pick a foundation that doesn't quite match you. Rather than not reaching for it and rather than walking around with a face that doesn't match the rest of your body, hopefully those tips will help you to get your foundation match just right. The next makeup mistake that you may be making has to do with lip liner and it is failing to blend in your lip liner properly. Now I'm a huge proponent of using a lip liner. I haven't always been, but as I am getting closer to my 40s, I find the older I get, the more I need the shape, the color, and the definition that a lip liner can give you. But there is a way to line your lips properly and there are some mistakes that can be made. I'm sure we all remember that look from the 90s where you had a deep lip liner and something light on the inside and there was no blending whatsoever. It was a stark line and a nearly white lipstick and that was kind of the look. If that look is still your thing, no shame. You do you. I know the 90s and 80s are kind of making a comeback right now, but I personally like the look of a more blended lip line. So this is what I typically like to do. So right now I just have a little bit of lip gloss on. We're going to go ahead and line my lips and I'll show you guys kind of how I like to do it. So I like to slightly line my lips and I do overline my lips just a little bit in the center on the bottom and the top, but just in the center portion. Once I have that lip liner on, I then like to take a clean finger and I very lightly will kind of drag and sort of dab that lip liner in feathering motions inwards on my lip. It's going to kind of blend out that line. It's going to pull some of that excess color into the center of my lips so that I maintain the definition on the outside, but I blend out the actual lip line. This is going to do a couple of things. It's going to make my lips look a little bit more natural. It's going to add a little bit more color to the center of my lips, which is going to last a little bit longer, especially if I'm topping this off with a lipstick or a lip gloss. It gives me all the benefits of using a lip liner, which is a little bit more fullness, a little bit more color, a little bit more definition without looking like I have a line going around the outside of my lips. Another benefit of doing it this way is it gives you more options for layering up your lip products. So if you have your lip liner blended into your lips a little bit more, you don't necessarily have to apply a lipstick on top that's going to match that lip liner. You can apply something a little bit lighter, a little bit darker. You can apply a lip gloss that's light or dark and it's going to kind of all blend together and mesh a little bit better. Overall, it just gives you a more seamless and blended look while still giving your lips the appearance of a little bit more fullness, a little bit more color, which is what I need in my lip product at all times. And this works with any lip liner of your choosing, whether it be something a little bit more of like a gel formula, like say the ColourPop lip liners or something a little bit more stiff like the MAC lip liners. This tip works wonders for making your lips look a little bit better.
The next makeup mistake that you might be making has to do with working with darker and deeper eyeshadows and it is applying too much product and using too large of strokes. I love using rich deep colors on my eyes. I love smoking out my outer corner. I do it in almost every look that I ever do. But I also have small eyes and I have to be careful with how much product I apply. When I very first started playing with eyeshadow, regardless of what product I was dipping my brush into or what brush I was using, I would always load my brush up with that color and then just kind of go at it thinking that the more I blended, the better things would look. That is not always the case. If you have too much of a dark color on your brush, the more you blend, the more color is going to kind of get everywhere. You're going to lose the definition and that is kind of the key for a really good eye look, at least for what I like in a good eye look, which is a good amount of depth but a good amount of shape at the same time and a nice bright inner lid and inner corner. So as I have gotten more practiced and more skilled, I've learned that when it comes to dark eyeshadow, applying less product and using smaller strokes is the key. So I wanted to demonstrate this for you guys today. So on my eyes today, I am wearing the ColourPop Making Moms palette. Right now I don't have anything super deep in my outer corner. I basically just put this in my transition area and this corner right here to kind of add a little bit of definition there in the crease and then I popped this shimmer all over my lid. But I do want to add a little bit more depth and kind of show you guys what I like to do. So we're going to take this color right here, the deepest shade in the palette. I'm going to take a small brush. I prefer using a small brush but you can use a larger brush as long as you are very careful with how much product you put on the brush. So what I'm going to do is just very lightly two times tap the very tip of my brush into the product. You will see I have the smallest amount of product right there. Then I will just take this product and I will very lightly kind of feather it or tap it into this outer corner right here and slowly start to build up depth in this area. It is always easier to add a little bit more than to take product away. In fact, let me just tell you guys, it is virtually impossible to take product away. Once you apply too much product, no amount of blending is going to fix it. So I always recommend applying less and adding more if you need it. So this is my third dip back into that deep color. So you can see with every tiny little dip, I'm building up a little bit more depth, but the shape is staying kind of where I want it to stay. And then just with what's left on my brush, I can use that to kind of add a little bit more shape a little bit further in maybe round out this outer corner a little bit more if you want a rounded corner or if you want something a little bit more stark, you can kind of angle it out a little bit more with that same brush. One more dip and I'm going to take this same color and lightly run it under the outermost part of my lower lash line. All right, so there we go. There's a little bit of depth. I want to do the same thing on the other eye, but I'm actually going to use a different brush for this. I'm going to use a larger brush just to show you guys that it can be done with a larger brush. So right here I have the Wayne Goss number 18 brush. I'm going to take this brush and just very lightly tap it into the very tip. You can see just the smallest amount of product right there. I know this brush was a little bit dirty before I used it. And again, all I'm going to do is just lightly tap that starting kind of at the lash line in the outer corner and then kind of feathering that through this outer V right there. One more dip, add a little bit more. You can see that color slowly start to build up. I'm not pressing very hard. I am not pulling very wide. I'm keeping these motions much more small and then just slowly kind of moving the shadow where I need it. When I first started working with deep shadows, I was terrible at this. I would basically load my brush up with a lot of product and then I would just use huge windshield wiper motions regardless of what shade I was using. And then at the end I would wonder why does my shadow look so messy and blurry and unshapely? And that was the reason why I was just using way too much product and way too large of motions. One more dip, we're going to add that to the lower lash line. Just drag it under that outer corner just a little bit. All right, so there you have it. That's how I like to add depth to my outer corner. That's how I like to work with deeper shadows, little bit of product, small motions, whether you're using a larger or a smaller brush, you can definitely make it work, but it's really all about how much you're using and where you are placing it. So those are my tips for you guys for five common makeup mistakes. I do wanna share one more tip with you guys, kind of a bonus tip or makeup mistake. I don't know if I call this a mistake necessarily, but it has to do with curling your lashes, or I should say 
not curling your lashes. Now, the reason I'm not necessarily titling this as a mistake is I know not everyone needs to curl their lashes. Everyone's eyelashes are completely different. Some of us have long or short, thick or thin, curled or straight lashes. Across the board, it's a little bit different for everyone. I am one of those people that thought I didn't need to curl my lashes for years and years. I did not do it. My eyelashes were relatively long. They were relatively curled, so I didn't think it was something I needed to do. But over the last year and a half, I've been consistently curling my lashes, and I am telling you guys, it makes a huge difference. Even if you have long lashes, who doesn't want their lashes to look their maximum length and uprightness? Am I right? I certainly do. And now that I have been curling my lashes for a long time, I absolutely swear by it that it makes a big difference in how open your eyes look. You don't need anything fancy to do this. I just use this simple $2 eyelash curler from e.l.f. I have the little pads here that I replace every couple of months. I stock up on these when I place an order with e.l.f. Regardless of what mascara I'm wearing, when my eyelashes are curled, I feel like my eyes look just a little bit better. One little tip I want to Give, though in curling your lashes is I actually like to curl my lashes as the very first thing I do before I start applying my makeup. That way once my lashes are curled they have a couple of minutes to kind of settle. Sometimes when you curl your lashes especially if you clamp a little bit too hard you can get that kind of sharp kink or L shape in your lashes. So giving your lashes a couple minutes to kind of settle into the curl is going to help them even out a little bit. I know they can be a little bit intimidating. We have all heard horror stories of people that have pulled their eyelashes out using an eyelash curler but I'm telling you guys if you have the courage to try it I think it makes a huge difference in how open and awake your eyes look regardless of what makeup look you are doing. And that is it, you guys, for the makeup mistakes that you may be making and some easy solutions to correct them. Do not be ashamed if you are guilty of making these mistakes either in the past or currently. I have made every single one of them myself at some point in my life. Also keep in mind, I am not a professional. I am simply a makeup lover, and these are just things that I have learned over the years as I become practiced and a little bit better at doing my makeup, and hopefully they will help you guys as well. Thank you guys so much for joining me for this video today. I hope that you guys enjoyed it. I certainly hope it was helpful for you guys. I would love to hear any tips that you guys have in regards to makeup. What are some things that you guys have learned to do or to avoid? Please leave those down below. I think that would be a lot of fun to hear your answers. Thank you guys again for stopping by. I hope that you guys are all doing well. One more reminder, if you are not yet subscribed to my channel, I hope that you'll do that before you leave. And that's all I have for you guys today. I will see you in my next video. Bye. Pretty fresh foundation is much. Oh my gosh. Mom, are you done? I am almost done. I just gotta... Are you, do you need to go potty? Do you need to go potty? No?